بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today inshallah we will talk about one of the unique pearls in Islam one of the mothers of the believers Asayyida Ramla bint Abi Sufyan Ramla said Ra'aytu fi an-nawm ka'anna atiyan yaqulu ya umm al-mu'minin ففزعت فأولتها فأولتها أن رسول الله يتزوجني فما هو إلا أن انقضت عدتي فما شعرت إلا برسول النجاشي على بابي يستأذن حاملا خدر طلب رسول الله بالزواج سورة ملا رضي الله عنها says I had a dream that in the dream, I heard, Ya Umm al Mu'minin, O mother of the believers. So I was scared. And I interpreted this dream uh, that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is going to get married to me. So it was only at the at the at the last day of uh, her idda, the time when uh, the uh, widow waits before marriage, there was a messenger at her door, and the messenger that messenger was the messenger of the Najashi of Negus, and he was asking for my hand to get married to. The Messenger of Allah. Who is Umm Habiba? Who is Ramla bin to Abi Sufyan? So Ramla is uh, a strong character. She is a woman who who has a strong character and who endured a lot. She was so patient for the for the uh, for what happened to her after she became a Muslim. So Umm al Mu'minin, Umm Habiba, radiyallahu anha, هي رملة بنت أبي سفيان. She is the daughter of the chief of the Umayyah clan. And Abu Sufyan was also the leader of the whole Quraysh tribe. So her story, her story represents the best record story between uh, the uh, Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, and the Muslims. Abu Habiba radiallahu anha. Uh, was married to Ubaidullah ibn Jahshin al-Asadi. And he was the brother of Zainab bint Jahsh, who is another mother of believers. So both the, uh, the two uh, uh, spouses, uh, Umm Habiba, and her husband, Ubaidullah, they became Muslims. They followed the, the religion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they faced a lot of pressure. They faced the torture. They faced the, the tyranny. They faced everything that uh, Quraysh was doing to the Muslims. So they... They uh, migrated from Mecca to Abyssinia. And the reason for that uh, uh, hijra, the reason for that migration was to run away with their religion. They, they left everything behind just for the sake of their 
new faith of their new religion that they followed. And especially the one who was giving them the, the hardest time or giving the whole Muslims the hardest time was her father, Abu Sufyan, the chief and the leader of Quraysh tribe. He, 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 was, he was about to get ma uh, mad when he heard that his daughter, his daughter and her husband, run away and migrated. So in Abyssinian, in Abyssinia, uh, Ramla radiallahu anha gave birth to her daughter, her daughter Habiba, and that's why Ramla is called Umm Habiba. So it was not a long time that Ubaidullah apostatized. He left the Islam religion again. And he was uh, uh, introduced to Christianity, which he liked. And not only that, he tried to get Zaw uh, his wife, Umm Habiba, away also from Islam. And he wanted her to be a Christian. But Umm Habiba was a very strong, had a very strong faith. And she was uh, so patient that she was strongly refusing his continuous attempts that she would go back away from the, the Islam religion and she would become a Christian. But no, Ramla did not listen to him. She was strong. She was very, very uh, strong-willed character and she was not weak at all for any second uh, towards what her husband was, was doing. And uh, she refused and he was always drinking wine and uh, was uh, doing, uh, trying to get her to be away from Islam but she would never do it. She was, she was she, feeling ashamed of his actions. He was, she was feeling bad because of what he is doing. So she tried to be away from people, uh, uh, yeah, just to, yeah, not to, to hear what they were saying. So Umm Habiba re, re, uh, narrates what happened. And she said, I saw in my dream as if my husband, Ubaidullah, became uh, very in, in a very bad shape and in a very bad look. So she was scared and she, she woke up and uh, she uh, realizing that he he uh, he was he was not the same character so he told her when she woke up oh um habiba i looked into the religion into the, into islam and uh, uh, i found out that uh, there is no religion that is better than Christianity. And I became Christian. So uh, she was shocked. And she said to him, I swear by Allah that this is not khair to you. This is not something good to you. And she saw him, she, saw, she told him about the dream that she just had but he did not care and he continued to drink wine and he continued to be Christian until he died. So Umm Habiba, Ramla radiallahu anha, lived in the uh, land uh, where she 
uh, where she suffered actually, but it was it was a big uh, a big test for her, and she said, "I was I was in isolation. I was worshiping Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." And I was very satisfied. I was very happy with, with whatever he decreed on me. She would weep when she would look at her daughter that her mom is Muslim. Her grandfather is, uh, uh, has no religion. He, he, he just worships the, uh, uh, the idols. Uh, and her father is Christian. And she she is very uh, uh, she, she, she 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 doesn't know what to do. So her husband left her, and there was no one to take care of her. So if she would think to go back to Mecca, there will be so much uh, a trouble over there. So much torture, torture over there. So what would she do? She would just keep depending on Allah. Her strong faith will make her endure all those, everything, all the, um, all the hardship that she is passing by. So. Um, she would get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this gives us a very important lesson. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make this life easy. He made it very, uh, 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 he made it full of tests. Because this life is not the life for uh just joy and uh it's not the life of uh taking yani fun it's not the life of uh relaxing no it is the life where we have to work we have to to prove we have to to do everything just to uh, to make sure that we are depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we should, how we should uh, be in this life. We should be relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be happy with everything that he has, uh, uh, that he has decreed on us. We should practice patience. We should, we should show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever, he, whatever situation he puts us in, we are we accept it. So even hardship, we just thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for for everything, for all the hardship that we have, for one reason that this hardship is not a test in our faith. And when we make the dua. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to make our faith stronger, subhanAllah. So this was Umm Habiba. She was very patient. She accepted what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed on her. And she was just a strong uh, faced woman. And Umm Habiba says, when, uh, when my husband passed away, uh, it was the last day of uh, my Idda time, when there was uh, a messenger of the, uh, of the Najashi, of Negus, uh, and uh, she was a slave, and she told me, uh, she, she was sent with a message, she said, uh, 
the the king is saying to you wakili man yuzawijuki min nabiy al-arab just um, choose someone who would be your uh, a guardian who will be the one who would get you married to the prophet of the arabs faqad arsala ilayhi liyakhtubaki la because he the messenger of allah has sent to the king a letter that he is asking him to to get married to you so she said to her may allah give you glad tidings good news so the days of hardship is passing is passing away and we uh, with patience with love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these were the two important factors that made her stronger that made her strong to 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 uh, stand and to face these tribulations that she passed by so whenever we have any problem we just depend on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we believe that whatever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for us is the khair and this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, in the holy quran he says wamay yattaqillaha yaj'al lahu makhraja anyone who fears allah he will make for him a way out just fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the time of ease. He will be with you during the time of hardship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for him from where, from where he does not expect. Whoever relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah is sufficient for him. Inna Allah baligu amri. Allah has set, uh, set for everything a decreed extent. So nothing in this dunya will happen except by the decree by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. So no matter what we have, whether good or bad, we have to accept. And it's always said that the good things we have are the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not something that we are good, we are powerful, we are uh, uh, lucky, we are no. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decreed these good things for us. So we have to thank him. We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything, for all the khair that he has given us. And as I just mentioned, we also have to thank him for any bad thing that we face. Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us for. Life is not easy. We have to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are happy, we are content, even with, the, with, the, with tribulations. If someone has a car accident and he broke, broke his, uh, uh, his, uh, his arm, he would say, alhamdulillah, I did not break two arms. Alhamdulillah, I do not break my back. Alhamdulillah, I have my sight. Alhamdulillah. So just out of all tribulations, we say Alhamdulillah. And this was Umm Habiba. She was so patient and she endured a lot. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the most merciful. He will have mercy on us. And he had mercy on her. 
and he rewarded her for her uh, patience. And he would reward her in dunya before her big reward in akhirah. So one day when she was just making this dua and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, just asking, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Allah answered her prayers. Allah promised us. He said, Udruni astajib lakum. Make dua and I will answer. And the best time to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, uh, uh, the short time before Fajr prayer, before Fajr Adhan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends down to the lowest sky and he would say, Hal min mustaghfirin fa'aghfira lah. Is there anyone who is asking me for forgiveness and I will forgive him? Is there someone who is... Uh, uh, making tawbah and I will accept his tawbah. Is there someone who is asking for anything and I will answer their call? Just wake up before Adhan Fajr and just make your wudu, pray to rakahs and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell him what you want. He is, he is close to us. I'm close to you. I'm close to those who are begging me, who are making dua. Make lots of dua and Allah is there to answer you. Some people would say, oh, we, we made lots of dua, but Allah did not reply to us. So Allah did not answer our, our prayers. And for those people, I say two things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is either keeping your dua to the akhirah, to the day after, and he will highly reward you for that. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pushed away so much hardship that was directed to you. But because of your dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved you. You might not have noticed that. But be sure that when you make dua, keep the good faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to answer you. He, is, he will answer your calls. He will answer your dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, if there is someone who is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lo lo loves that person, he would tell the malaika, he would tell the angels, just delay, delay the, the uh, giving him the what he wishes because he is my beloved servant and I like to hear his voice. And if someone is bad and, uh, of the hellfire people, if he is making, uh, if he is asking Allah for something, he will tell the malaik. Allah will tell the malaik, give him what he wants. I don't want to hear his voice. So Umm Habiba did not believe what she heard. So she asked the, the slave just to say it again. And she was very happy. She was very happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted and has fulfilled her wishes. So uh, she sent uh, to uh, a message to Khalid ibn Sa'id ibn al-As and she made him his, uh, her guardian. He made him the one who is responsible to get her married. And she looked at the uh, slave uh, servant and, the, uh, and she gave her some uh, uh, bungles and rings and, uh, the, because, as, uh, as a gift for the good, uh, the good uh, Bushra, for the good news that she gave him. So at night, Al-Najashi Al uh, uh, gathered uh, uh, the people, all the Muslims, and uh, he he uh, 
uh, gave us uh, uh, a ceremony. So the marriage ceremony took place for uh, Umm Habiba, for Ramla, radiyallahu anha. It took place in Abyssinia. So uh, the king said, إن رسول الله محمدا كتب إلي أن أزوجه أم حبيبة بنت أبي سفيان. So the messenger of Allah has uh, sent me a request that I would get him married to أم حبيبة بنت أبي سفيان. And here I am uh, 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 answering his call and he sent uh, a dower of 400 din. din. Dinar, and he gave the uh, the money to Khalid, the uh, one who was responsible for this marriage. Ma marriage, and it is said that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not give a dower higher than this, a dowry higher than this to any of uh, his other wives. So uh, Khalid radiyallahu anhu said. Uh, I am uh, accepting the uh, proposal of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I am getting him married to Umm Habiba bint Abi Sufyan. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and bless this marriage. Uh, Khalid radiallahu an prepared a feast for the Muslims and he would not allow anyone to leave before, before having food. And he said, اجلسوا فإن من سنة الأنبياء إذا تزوجوا أن يؤكل طعام على التزويج. So stay back. No one is leaving. It's a sunnah, it's something that the messengers do, the, the prophets would do. If they get married, they would feed people. So uh, an Najashi ordered, uh, ordered uh, his wife to send uh, 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 perfumes to Umm Habiba. And uh, she kept them and she saved them until it was the day where she met Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So her wish, which Umm Habiba uh, was living for, was fulfilled. And uh, it was uh, the day when she uh, uh, migrated to Al-Madin Al-Munawwara. And above all, She's going to be the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it was the time when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was coming back from the, uh, uh, the battle of Khaybar, from Min Ghazwati Khaybar, uh, after he uh, uh, was so victorious over there. And he... Uh, there was a, there was a surprise for him. Two big sh ship uh, 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 ships uh, arrived from Abyssinia, bringing back whoever Muslims were there, and they arrived in Medina. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very happy to see his cousin uh, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. He was uh, someone whom he loved a lot. And uh, it is uh, a well-known uh, uh, saying by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi'ayyihima afrah bi'fatihi khaybar an bi'awdati Ja'far. So who, who I am going to be uh, happy more with. Was it the victory of Khaybar uh, or the coming or the uh, coming back of Jafar uh, and all the Muslims? And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was welcoming all the Muslims. And suddenly he saw Umm Habiba who was waiting for him 
who was waiting to uh, meet him. He was happy to see her and he ordered Bilal uh, to, to take her uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the rope of her camel and to get her into the house that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered to be ready for his new wife. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got in uh, to, uh, to uh, Umm Habiba and when he got in, he smelled the perfumes uh, which was uh, given to her by the wife of uh, Al-Najashi, of the king. So he, he did not uh, say anything to that. And uh, he he uh, he was happy uh, with Um Habiba radiallahu anha. So the marriage uh, was consumed in uh, the the seventh year of Hijrah after Sulh al Hudaybiyah, and Um al Mu'minin Ramla was in the house of Sayyidna Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. At that time, her, she was about 40 years old, and uh, she was still living the hardship of her father, who was not a Muslim. And uh, she was making dua, lots of dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would guide would guide her father to Islam. So one day after uh, there was, uh, um, uh, after some of the non-Muslims uh, broke the Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the agreement with the Muslims, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam refused to, to see the leader of Quraysh who came, uh, who rushed and came to, uh, to see Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to have an excuse of what those non-believers have done. But Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam refused to see him. And uh, her father, Abu Sufyan, the father of Umm al-Mu'mineen, Ramla radiallahu anha, he wanted to visit his daughter. And she hasn't seen him for a long time, since her first uh, migration to Abyssinia. So when he came into her room, into her house, she, she, she was... Uh, bewildered that she's seeing her her father he wanted to sit on a, a mattress that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to sit on but she immediately rushed and she put the mattress away from him so Abu Sufyan was so so sad he said يا بني والله ما أدري أرغبت به عن هذا الفراش أم رغبت به عني Oh my daughter I don't know if you don't want me to use this uh, this uh, mattress or you don't want the mattress to to uh, uh, to, to to have me on it He was still a non-Muslim and he thought he thought that it might be just a very simple mattress that does not uh, that is not good for the uh, for the uh, uh, leader of Quraysh to sit on but he did not know that his daughter the, the, uh, uh, would not allow 
a non-Muslim to sit on the mattress of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she told him that very honestly and very openly. So she said, بَلْ هُوَ فِي رَاشُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ it's the mattress of Sayyidina Muhammad. It's the mattress of the Messenger of Allah. And you are a non-believer. You are someone who is against, against Islam. You are not pure. I cannot. I cannot let you sit on it. Abu Sufyan was so upset and after all those years his daughter would not let him let him sit on the mattress so he said to her لقد أصابك بعدي يا بنية شر you there is something wrong there is something bad that happened to you my daughter she said, Hadani Allahu lil Islam. Allah has guided me to Islam. Allah has enlightened my heart. Wa anta ya abah, Sayyidu Quraysh wa kabiruha. And you, my father, you are the leader of Quraysh. You are the, the, the highest ranked people, person in Quraysh. كيف يسقط عنك دخول الإسلام وأنت تعبد حجرا وأنت تعبد حجرا لا يسمع ولا يبصر how how can you resist Islam how can you still worship a stone that does not hear that does not uh, uh, see anything so he said to her Oh, you too? You want me to leave the religion of my fathers, of my forefathers, and follow the religion of Muhammad? He said these words, and he left her very upset, very, very angry. And he came, he went back to, to his people like someone who was outcasted. It was only a few days that the army of the Muslims was going towards Mecca and to conquer Mecca. So Ramla radiallahu anha at that time, she was in a position that was so hard to her. Her husband and her father she knows that her husband is 100% on the right way. But she also knows that her father is still opposing him. Her husband's religion would take people from, from darkness into light. But her father's, uh, whatever he is, he is worshipping, is taking people from light to uh, darkness. So the only power that she would be having was to make dua. Making dua that her father would become a Muslim, that was her main concern. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed عسى الله أن يجعل بينكم وبين الذين عاديتم منهم مودة والله, والله قدير والله غفور رحيم Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put between you and those whom, whom you have been enemies among them Allah will put affection Allah is competent he is forgiving and he is merciful. So it was 10,000 people, 10,000 Muslims, 10,000, uh, uh, the army of 10,000 uh, Muslims who were going directly to Mecca. So they 
before they reached Mecca, very very nearly to, to, to Mecca, they Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them to, to stop and to spend the night there. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the Muslims to, uh, to ignite fire in front of their tents. And when Quraysh, when the, when the messengers of Quraysh who came just to see what's going on, they saw that much fire, they knew that there is a huge army that they cannot fight. So they came back to their, to their leaders. They came back to Quraysh scared. And they were just telling them, you, there, there will be something horrible. So Abu Sufyan came to uh, the place where the Muslims were camping. And he wanted to know what's going on. So uh, Al-Abbas ibn Abd al-Muttalib stopped him. And he said, he told him that the messenger of Allah is going to conquer Mecca and he will be victorious. He, he will get into Kaaba and he will, he will destroy all the, all the idols over there. He will destroy all the, the gods that they were, they were worshipping. And he said to him, May your mom just miss you. Just you, you would, uh, you would die. Just, just be a Muslim. Isn't it time yet? Isn't it time? So he took him to to the uh, tent of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered that uh, Al-Abbas keep him in his tent until the morning. And when he was going with him, uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, saw him and he wanted to uh, just uh, kill him. But Al-Abbas said, he is under my protection. You cannot touch him. So uh, Abu Sufyan was scared. And in the tent, he was just thinking, what is going to happen in the morning? What is the hard punishment that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to put upon him and, uh, uh, and those who were torturing the Muslims. So, in the morning, the long night has passed. And in the morning, Abu Sufyan and uh, the uh, Al-Abbas came to see in the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and he said, وَيْحَكَ يَا أَبَا سُفْيَانَ أَمَا آنَ أَن تَعْلَمَ أَن لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ Woe to you, Abu Sufyan. Isn't it time for you to know, to realize that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger? At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlightened his heart. And he uh, acknowledged Islam and he embraced Islam and became a Muslim. And he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa annaka ya Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness there is no God except Allah and that you, Muhammad, is the messenger of Allah. So when uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, wanted to uh, lead the uh, army, Al-Abbas radiallahu anhu came to him and he asked him that to, to give something special 
to Abu Sufyan. He is, he is the leader of Quraysh. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted and he said, مَنْ دَخَلَ دَارَ أَبِي سُفْيَانَ فَهُوَ آمِنٌ Whoever enters the, the house of Abu Sufyan, then he is safe. That was an honor for Abu Sufyan. وَمَنْ أَغْلَقَ بَابَهُ فَهُوَ آمِنٌ Whoever stays in his home is safe. وَمَنْ دَخَلَ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ فَهُوَ آمِنٌ And whoever gets into the masjid, then into the mosque, then he is safe. So, Abu Sufyan uh, was sent to uh, the people and Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered him to, to uh, uh, send the, uh, those people who call, uh, some, uh, who call the people, uh, there were special, uh, yani, uh, that was a special position that if they wanted to announce something, someone would call people and he would tell them uh, what's going on. So, Abu Sufyan was ordered to send someone to tell them that their um, that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad is coming in into Mecca, and there is no need for for any fighting, no need for blood to be blood shedding, and uh, the uh, everybody knew at that time that the leader of Quraysh became a Muslim. So Umm Habiba could not believe what she heard. She was so happy. And she said, Aslam Abi, my father became a Muslim. Woman amin, and whoever enters his house, my father's house, then he is safe. And she was very happy. And she immediately did sujood, shukr lillahi su'ala. She, she, she did this uh, sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thanking him that her father, that her father did not die as a non-Muslim. So this was how uh, her uh, prayers were answered. She was making a lot of prayers that her father would become a Muslim before he dies, and there he is. So later on, uh, there was uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got sick and he passed away. And Umm Habiba was very patient for this big loss the loss of the husband, the loss of the lover of Allah, the loss, uh, the loss of her lover, her beloved husband. And she was uh, also uh, into her ibadah, into her worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, she lived during the uh, caliph time of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, radiallahu anhum. And uh, when uh, there was the big problem, the big fitna between the Muslims uh, at the time of uh, Uthman, radiallahu uh, anhu, she, she, she used to come to his house and to get him some water and some sustenance. So this was... Uh, the the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, she felt that it's her death time she felt later that she is going to die so she asked uh, for Ummul Mu'minin Aisha wa Ummul Mu'minin Umm Salama radiyallahu anhun she called them and she said to her uh, she asked them for forgiveness if there is something bad that happened between them as the wives of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad and they forgave her and she said uh, you made me happy may Allah make you happy and she 
she went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. أتت الله بقلب سليم It's so important to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. And this is our dua. Ya Allah, keep our heart sound on the day. Make our heart sound. Make us uh, of those who have a sound heart when they come back to you. And this is very important because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On the day of judgment, nothing would benefit any, anyone. No money, no children, no, nothing, no wealth, nothing will benefit someone, uh, anyone unless... He, he who comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a good heart. So, uh, Umm uh, uh, um Habiba, radiallahu anha, uh, died at the time of the caliphate of her, her brother Muawiyah, and she was buried in Al Baqir. Uh, she was uh, one of the uh, people who narrated hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she, it, it was said that she narrated 65 of the hadith to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the hadith that, uh, that she uh, narrated was uh, the saying of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ صَلَّى فِي يَوْمٍ ثَلَتَيْ عَشْرَةَ سَجْدَةَ تَطَوْعًا Whoever prays 12 rak'ahs of uh, uh, extra prayer other than the fard prayers, and this would be the sunnah, uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, would reward him with uh, a palace in paradise. And فَمَا تَرَكْتُهُنَّ مُنذُ سَمِعْتُهُنَّ So I never, uh, I never left the praying these uh, 12 uh, rak'ahs since the time I heard uh, the Messenger of Allah saying that. And uh, these 12 rak'ahs can be uh, two rak'ahs before uh, Fajr prayer, uh, two rak'ahs after Dhuhr, four af before Asr, two rak'ahs after Maghrib, and two rak'ahs after Isha. And these would be 12, uh, 12 rak'ahs. So may Allah make us of those who listen and would do, would follow the best of uh, the words. May Allah uh, unite us with Umm Habiba, with the mother of the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these, the, this was just something about the life of Umm Habiba, Ramla bintu Abi Sufyan, radiallahu anha. And until next week, inshallah, I will leave you by sending a special salam, a special greeting, the best salam to our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala habibika al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.